Hello and welcome to day nine of 30 days of doodles. Today we are moving on with a globe, a highlighter, and some washi tape. So let's get in with the globe. So we're gonna start with a circle. If you don't have a circle stencil, you can just draw a circle to the best of your ability. And I like to just kind of continue tracing around until I have a pretty good circle shape. And you'll get there if you just keep taking your pencil and just drawing it around in a circle shape and you'll kind of fix out any bumps you have. So then you're gonna go around just outside that circle and create a half circle and then a second half circle just slightly behind that. And that's that piece of the globe that holds it there. I don't know what it's called, but it holds it there. So then we're gonna add these little rectangles at the ends where those the pins would go into the actual globe. I like to take and draw a straight line all the way through so that I know that my pins are directly opposite each other on my globe and then we won't use our pens to draw over that line that goes through the globe. Now adding our base, I'm just gonna make two curved lines coming off the bottom for the base and then add an oval shape for the actual base. And then we'll go over this with our pen. Remember not to go over the pencil lines that are going directly over the globe. Those were just guidelines to use to make sure that we lined up our pins correctly. So trace around your circle first and then go over and trace around your half circles and then your pins and finally your base. For the interior of the globe, I'm going to use my smaller pen to kind of create some abstract looking continents. If you want to get really technical with it, you can definitely look at a picture of a world map to for reference, but most of us know what the continent's general shape is, so if you can get that, it will be pretty obvious that you are portraying a globe. And then I just use some little lines to fill in the continents to separate the earth from the water. You could also use colors and use markers or colored pencils to color them green and blue to separate the land from the water. Moving on to our highlighter, this will be very similar to the pencil that we drew on day eight. So we're going to start out with that tall, narrow rectangle, but instead of making a pointed tip, we are just going to add the flat lines at the top and at the bottom. The next step would be to add your cap line where the cap makes it, and then we're going to kind of round those out to give them that more 3D feel and then you would add the little tip of the cap. So this is kind of based on a zebra mild liner. And then you have a curvy cap piece and clip. And then I'm adding in a little circle. Like I said, this is totally referencing a zebra mild liner highlighting pen. So you don't have to put all these little details or the little circle oval thing that I drew. You can draw your own and draw your own cap if you would like. And then we'll just go over it all in pen. On this one, I am not using my super fine point pen. I am just using the small Faber-Castell because I didn't really have any super fine details that I wanted to make look exceptionally different from the outline. Next, we're gonna draw a roll of washi tape and we're gonna draw it artistically. So we're going to add a little piece of the washi tape coming off the side so it's not just 
a circle. So we're gonna start with an oval because we're seeing it kind of from an angle, not directly from above where it would look like a circle and not directly from the side where it would appear to be kind of a rectangular shape. So we're going to draw an oval and then we're gonna pull the very edges of our oval down, straight down, and then create another very similar curved line. And then to add on the tailpiece, similar to what you would do with a banner, you're going to make two parallel lines that run out past the oval. So the big part here is to make sure that you don't draw that right hand line that extends down from the oval. So here I am just adding in the inner swirl where all the washi tape would be wrapped around the center piece. And now we'll go in with our pen and we will outline all of the major stuff. So like I said, just make sure you don't outline that one line on the right hand side of the oval that comes down because this piece of washi tape extends all the way past that so you wouldn't see that end point of the washi tape because the tape piece is covering it up. Here I'm adding in just a little triangle piece of where it wraps around because you would be able to see that on a roll of washi tape so you can kind of see where it's the, the actual roll is and where the tape is pulling away from it. And then we'll go ahead and add all of our inner details to this so the spiral and the inside piece and I like to shade my inside piece to give it some depth because it's going to look a lot darker than the roll of washi tape because that circle goes all the way through the, the roll of washi tape. And then the last step is to add any design that you like, whether it go with your theme or you're just trying to come up with something unique, is to add a design to your roll of washi tape. I just went with a very simple um, diamond pattern, but you could do florals. Um, if it was Valentine's Day, you could do hearts or roses. For St. Patrick's Day, you could do four leaf clovers. You can think about just about anything to match anything you're going with and add it to this cute little doodle roll of washi tape. All right guys, that wraps up day nine of 30 days of doodles. I hope you will join me tomorrow for day 10. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.